Today we're going to demonstrate how to take a public domain comic book, take a story out of it, clean it up, and prepare it for re-lettering with Cherokee. The purpose of this is to use already existing material to reduce the amount of labor and how long it takes to produce new educational material for use by students. Um, comics are a real good medium for teaching languages because a lot of the story is done graphically and does not require descriptions in language. Um, the only thing that's really um, translatable or that needs to be translated and put into the target language is the dialogue, which is actually a more important component of language learning. Okay, the first thing and thing we need to do is to actually get a comic book and download it so that we can get the images for the pages out of it. Um, in this particular case, we are going to be using um, a portion of the comic book series Billy and Buggy Bear. Um, a, a group of students and teacher have been translating it into Cherokee so it's a good starting point to um, demonstrate how to take what they've done as far as translation work goes and to repurpose a comic with relettering in Cherokee. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to go to a site such as comicbookplus.com. There are other sites available, but this one is one of the easier ones that we have found to use. Um, so I want to search for Billy and Buggy Bear. And here it is. And it'll actually show multiple um, like setups for it. So we'll just click on the first one here. Okay. The particular one that they are translating from is Billy and Buggy Bear issue number 10. So we'll go to that. So now we have issue number 10 being displayed. So what we need to do now is to download the file. So I'm going to place it into a folder. I've already created myself a folder called Comics, and inside that I've made created another folder called Billy and Buggy Bear. Uh, the file will end with CBZ. This means compressed comic book zip so we'll go ahead and save it there as soon as it's saved um, we can close out the web browser and we can come over here and so here's the file so now I can right click the file on here and tell it I wish to extract it um, Windows machines and Mac machines probably do that a little bit differently, but it should be very similar to what I'm doing here with my Linux box. So now I can go into this folder. Now, so as you can see, each page is an image. So like for page one, or image one is the cover page. So image two, this is an ad that was in the comic um, I'm from based on this they've skipped the inside of the cover because it's probably blank and like here we have the first story in this particular comment Pat and Mike in this particular case we're looking for um, specifically salty turtle in this here so let's take a look at the actual page so what you're looking at is, the first thing to keep in mind is that comics, especially in the 40s and 50s, and probably all the way up through the 90s, and even modern comics to some degree, were printed on a thin cream paper. So this is why this isn't white. Um, aging of the paper additionally has occurred, which makes it even darker. So that's one of the things we have to correct for. Um, in this particular case, we'll be removing all of this paper color right here because we don't want it. We want it to be transparent so that it doesn't impact anything we're doing. And it's the same thing for here and here for the speech bubbles. And 
things like we know for a fact are supposed to be white, we normally just remove that and put a white, true white in so that it um, displays better in modern printing for paper printing and displays better in ebook readers. One other thing that normally has to be handled um, depending upon your needs is the removal of English writing from various portions of the text. Um, in this particular case there's English writing um, in the image on the book. That's one thing that has to be corrected. Um, there's usually a few but not many this way. For example, this wanted poster also has English writing on it that will need to be removed. Um, and I'll show you how one way of doing that. There's not a set way, but there is a way. And I can show you how I go about doing it. So I have a program called GIMP installed. And I use it for um, graphics manipulation. So this is the main program here. And I will go ahead and open up number 29, which is the first image of the story we're wanting to do. Here I can have a preview, so I know I'm looking at the right one. And I can hit open. Now GIMP normally saves things in a format called XCF. So that's the first thing we need to do is to save this as XCF. So I just hit File, Save As. It's already going to put the XCF on the end, and the rest of the name's going to be the same. So I can just do that. It's going to be in the same location that I'm pulling from, which is fine for now. And I can hit Save. So now I have a way to save my changes as a work in progress. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to apply what's called level adjustments. Um, it's kind of the black really isn't black and we would like to get a better contrast in the intensity of the colors before we start so we go to so we go to colors levels so what we're going to look at is the input levels we're going to leave the output levels to 0 and 255 what we're going to need to do is, if you look at this waveform right here, this represents where the visual range of the image is. So if I can sit here and I can grab this one and I can move it over like that. And if you notice, the black actually turns black and, gives, and all the colors actually become enhanced. And then we can move this one down just a little bit get rid of the washout some. We can probably move this one up a little bit more. Say about there. So make a note of these numbers because we want to apply the exact same settings to uh, any future pages from the same scan of the same comic book. Um, each comic book that you do will have to be, this will have to be recalculated each time because each version of the comic book is going to be slightly different due to the aging, etc. So in this particular case I've selected 45 and here right here you can see where you can actually um, pick a color that you want to be treated as black and here you can pick a color that you want to treat as white. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see how that works. We'll click this one here. Well first we'll um, zoom in so we can see better what we're doing and then we're going to um, tell I want this to be my black and then I want to tell it I want this to be my white and I can zoom back out and I can see what and see how it looks so that actually does improve it a little bit better um, now you can see where the paper was original color of the paper most likely was probably like this and here you can see the aging of the paper as the darker areas. So let's go ahead and use these values then um, which would be 58 and 217. Okay now that that's done 
Um, the next thing we need to do is begin removing um, portions that need to become transparent. Okay, the next so step we need to do is we need to add a transparency layer. The reason we need to add a transparency layer is because to remove this stuff and have it become transparent so that it's not anything, not even, you know, neither white nor black nor anything, it, it allows anything below it to show up. We have to add a special layer for that. Um, JPEGs by default do not work uh, with transparency options. You have to add it. Okay, for the transparency, um, yeah. uh, it's a two step process. First, we need to select this, which is the image. Um, this is a layer view, by the way. So we hit layer. And the first thing we're going to do is add what's called an alpha channel. This allows this particular component to be see through to the layer below it. So we're going to first hit the add alpha channel. Then we're going to hit the add layer button. We don't need to worry about naming it. We just need to make sure the fill width says transparency. Um, and then hit OK. Then we need to change the order. So this layer needs to get moved down below this layer. So once we've done this um, as a demonstration, you can now make it transparent by simply removing uh, things from this image. Um, it's important to have the layer you're working with selected. In this case, in every case, it's going to be the JPEG layer. So now I can select the um, fuzzy select tool, which will allow me to select areas for removal based upon similar colors. Um, and I can increase the amount of area being selected for removal by pulling the mouse down and I can reduce the amount of area selected for removal by moving the mouse up. This is while I have the left mouse button clicked. So when I do this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to click and hold and then I'm going to pull down and I'm going to watch for uh, any areas that get removed I don't want removed. As soon as I see that, which is like right here, I'm seeing areas I don't want removed. I need to go back up to where they're put back. Something like that. Then I need to hit the delete button. And now you can see where the um, paper, uh, the cream paper has been removed from the image. Now I need to zoom in because here we have some more areas that need to be removed. So I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to pull down. Then I'm going to hit delete button and I will repeat here. And I can repeat here. And I can zoom out, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Okay, it all looks good. Now, if you look, you'll, um, you'll see little spots like that. And one of the things that can be done is I can click right here and then I can start pulling down and it will get more spots that way. That is not what I wanted. Whenever that get becomes a problem, I'm hitting Control Shift A to deselect everything. Whenever that becomes a problem, where when you're trying to remove it and it just won't let you, um, I, most of the work's already done with what I was wanting removed. So what, we're, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, take the rectangle selection tool, and I'm going to select up to next to the image there. I want to hit delete. I want to go do the same thing on this side. I want to get as close as I can without actually touching anything. And I'm going to hit the delete button and go down to the bottom. And I'm going to repeat. section here like 
this. And this doesn't have to be perfect, by the way. It's just got to be good enough to help with uh, the next steps, which is just getting it mostly cleaned up. All right, so the next thing I need to do is now we have all this extra space at the bottom and all that that we really don't need. Um, but we'll take care of this um, later. Um, we need to kind of keep the page size consistent. Um, and we can, we'll look at how to do that later. All right, so I'm going to save my work so far. It's always important to do that. Then we're going to go to the speech bubbles. So I'm going to go back to my fuzzy select tool. And I'm going to do like that. And you can see now that most of the speech bubble has been cleared out. Then I can go to here to this one, which is called the free select tool. And I can actually draw like this. back to where it started from. It'll a dot will light up that I can let go. Then I can press delete. And then I can press control shift A to make the selection go away to see if there's any spots left there is. I can do it like that. Clear that final spot. So now I have a clear speech bubble which I can then uh, use to re-letter later. We'll repeat the um, same thing here. Zoom in so I can see what we're doing better. Control shift A. Select. Delete. Free select. So the speech bubble has been totally cleared out. The next step is actually optional. Um, I have a tendency to want to remove any English from the um, uh, comics I'm relettering, which includes things like the title and in scene English where it's feasible. Sometimes it's just really not very feasible. Um, and then later we can put in a different uh, font in Cherokee for the title and the same thing for here. Um, we'll be using Inkscape to do the second part. The first part here, which we're using with just GIMP, is strictly for uh, cleaning up the images. Um, so as you can see, we're going to have two sections that are going to need um, adjustment. And there's two ways to go about doing this. I can either do it totally in Inkscape, or I can do it or I can remove the text using uh, in what we call in paint functions and like the same thing for here so that I have a clean template to work with in Inkscape and that's what we're going to do on this one because and that's mainly because of the um, the amount of texture to be easier when we put it in Inkscape to re-letter when we uh, if we don't have all this up here that we have to hide um, using Inkscape if it's actually just not in the image at all so what we're going to do is we're going to go to here and we're going to go to clone Smudge clone tool. So what we're going to do is we select what we want to clone from. Okay, you have to control click. And you can see over there on the right that the button where I control clicked is right there and where I'm painting over everything is literally this duplicating from over there. And the reason I want to do that because it maintains the um, coloration the same 
and the dots of the way the ink hit the paper is largely the same enough to where you can't it becomes less obvious this was done um, this is actually a Photoshop Photoshop technique by the way uh, even though I've never really used Photoshop so then I'll get this cleared up here actually can set my uh, thing over here now because I have more black area to work from and I can now do this and each time I let go this is going to go back to the beginning so I can do it like a little bit and if it gets too close to the letter A I can let go repeat 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 As you can see, this actually works out pretty well. Um, I'll have to do something similar, but with different uh, selections over for the next set of words, or next word. And if you're on Windows and Mac, GIMP is available to download and install. You'll have to um, um, look it up. Now, if I were to look at this really close, which I'll do in just a second so you can see, um, it's not a perfect, um, there's usually flaws of some sort or another in it, but that's fine. And you can see there's actually little spots of red and stuff. That's fine. That's totally harmless because of my goal is just to get rid of the uh, English text while still maintaining a general appearance of what the original comic looks like. Now, this one is a little bit differently. What I'll have to do over here is I'll have to select the background and then I'll have to do like this very carefully. And here you can see where it's actually disappearing. It actually makes the text totally disappear as if it never was there. Yeah, and I do have to periodically let go with the mouse and press it back down again so that it keeps going back to the area I'm trying to clone from. Now this over here will probably work out better if I were to clone um, the line itself. So I'll line up here and I'll control click to set the new clone from point. And then what I can do is then I can just go up following the line and keep letting go periodically. So we need to do this lower. As you can see, it's actually allowing me to do a line. And I gotta keep letting go periodically. zoom in I can now get rid of this stuff over here uh, we'll get the um, pre-select tool we'll zoom in pretty good so that we can draw better all right so now we do not have any English text the only thing I'm interested in doing is I can see this coloration variation which I a little too more than I would like so I'll go back to cloning Do some minor adjustments there, try to get it to blend a little bit better. Yes, that'll work better. All right. So now we got to work on the book. So file save just in case things crash. So we need to do the same thing here. So I'll go ahead and select. Let's see here. 
do here. Select out of my source. And I can do a little bit at a time. Because I don't have that much. Uh, the area I'm cloning from is not that large. So I have to keep doing this a little bit at a time. Continuously releasing the mouse and clicking it back. And here you can see it really doesn't, you really can't tell there was something really there unless you really look for any kind of minor distortions as in the background. We can always add it back. We really don't have to have a black box there. The main thing we want to do is get a book with a cover that we can then re-letter using Inkscape. So now we have an um, empty area for um, putting new lettering in. This is kind of lighter here. I really I want it to be more the same, more uniform. So we'll do like that a little bit. Needs a little bit more uniform feel. All right. So this is the first page of the comic. Um, so I'm going to save it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, remaining pages in a, and you can see it happen in fast mode. Okay, now that we have the pages cleaned up, we need to crop them all um, based upon the visual information on each page. So I'll go ahead and open them up one at a time. And pause away GIMP works, I can go ahead and open the uh, rest of them up one by one. So 
pretty much what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to get rid of all this blank space. Um, so we're going to go to image, um, crop to content. And you can see here it now has removed all the extraneous blank space from around the comic. So I can save that, close it, and repeat. Now here you will see, like right here, it couldn't crop all the way to the box because the gun is sticking outside the box. That's, that happens a lot with comics. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, move all the XCF files out of here. And I'm going to put them into a new folder um, called Salty Turtle. And because this is from issue 10, we're going to put a 10 at the end. And then we're going to paste them into here. Okay, so now these are the original XCFs. They still contain the um, transparency as layers and other things needed for bitmap manipulation. We need to convert these into a format that we can load into the Inkscape program. So I'm going to open them back up in GIMP. Um, all of them. Then I need to do a file, export as, which is control shift E. And then um, I'm wanting PNG right here. So it's got, I gotta change it to dot PNG. I need to make sure it's in my working folder. And I can hit export, hit export again. I do this for each of the images. So now we have PNGs for each of these images. Now, um, the keep things simpler, one of, I'm going to go ahead and create subfolders. Uh, this is going to be the um, uh, raw images. And I'll show you why in just a second. This way we're not confused. So we got all the raw images are in here. And actually let's do it like this as well. All right. So here's I have the XCF images I started off with that I cleaned up. This is the PNG versions, which I need the PNG versions for uh, generating the actual, uh, for, for um, importing into Inkscape. And um, so I'm calling this raw images because this is before I do any lettering. So now I need to activate Inkscape. Inkscape is also available for Windows and Mac. Okay. Now the first thing I need to do is change the paper size. Um, it it's defaults to U.S. letter for me. I mean, it might be different for you, so you need to double check. Um, as a general rule of thumb, comics are not eight and a half by eleven, um, even though I put them on eight and a half by eleven part of the time. But if they're standalone, I generally try to stick with like six by nine. 
because it gives, I mean, it's not really the correct aspect ratio for a true comet, which I think is like seven by 10 or something like that. Um, but this is close enough. And, and if you're planning on doing print on demand, this is an available paper size you can use for print on demand. So we'll go ahead and change the units back to pixels. And then we can close this. And so now we have the six by nine um, sheet, and I can do file, mix, green buggy bear, Sally Turtle. This is going to be um, page 29, I believe. So we've got page 29. Now I can go to here and import an image, documents, comics. I want the raw images and I want to go ahead and get the first raw image. And so here it is. And I'm going to hit Control Shift A and we're going to center it. As you can see it actually does not fit the page so I need to adjust this and I need to, and I'll need to record these numbers that I adjust so first thing we want to do is go ahead and change this to zero for the X coordinate change this to zero for the Y coordinate so that it lines up with the top left corner of the paper um, and then we need to add a margin for the printing process um, 0.5 inches is usually pretty safe to add. So I'm adding 0.5 and 0.5 this way, and this way you can see how it moves down. Um, so this right here, because it's uh, six, well, first I need to lock this to keep these two numbers mathematically uh, corrected with each other. So six minus one inch. So this would give half an inch here and a half an inch here. And I can tell it to recenter again, so it's on the centered on the paper. So as you can see, it, um, comic books um, don't exactly fit six by nine, but this is a pretty uh, close. And this actually gives you the option if you wanted to do extra things at the top of the bottom, you can. Okay, so now what we need to do is get the document that contains the um, uh, Cherokee language um, translations. Okay, so Amaha na Doxy. Now, Doxy is really terrapin. It is not a generic term for turtle. Um, just as an FYI. So this is the title which goes there. So what I need to do then is I need to go here. I need to tell it I want to do text. And then I need to tell it I want um, Cherokee hand one. And I'm going to set this as my default font. And then I'll close that. And I'm going to go over here where it says the letter A, which is create and edit text boxes or text objects. And I want to click here and I'm going to write um, in Cherokee. Am I writing? Okay. So this is going to be a, um, a fancy graphic right here. So I need to actually use a different font. So, okay, so I'm looking at the different font options we have available on the CherokeeLessons.com website so I can see them all real quickly. And let's see, the Donny Sadanuska might be decent. Let's take a look at that. Your 
fill is white for the moment. And that's your outline. original one had text here and text here. Mm. But we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it like this. Uh, we're going to click it again so I get little turning arrows. I'm going to rotate it. And then we'll click it again to get the stretch arrows. So, the original comic book, uh, what was the style it was using? Red and yellow. That seems decent. So we'll take this one, we'll set the feel in red, we'll take this one, we'll set the feel to yellow. Now, one of the things you have to be really care about when you're doing these translations is not to overflow the text box with Cherokee text. Uh, sometimes this requires adjusting the dialogue to fit the text, the balloon. Um, so again, we're at Cherokee Ham One right now. It's, it's, we had normally had to pick a fixed font size for this, um, so. The stroke I need to be nothing, so I'm going to set the stroke to nothing. I'm going to set the field to be black. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to click right there. And it goes ho. Sure about you, yo. Uh, okay, let's do this again. I don't want stroke. I don't want. I want the fill. Okay. And you can see this is a lot of text to try to stick in here. So I'm going to change the font size to this track 12. And it's usually best to try to keep the font size consistent between, um, for the entire comic.
Okay, so there's the first page with the Cherokee lettering added, including the book title and pretty much all of the um, boxes of um, uh, speech bubbles are filled in. Now, one thing we do need to do is because this is a transparency and this is a transparency, we need to add a white background um, so that when we export this as an image, it has white in the correct spots. If we don't, these will turn transparent in the export image, which is not what we want. So we know the size of the paper, which is 576 by 864 in pixels. So what we want to do is we'll go over here to box, create rectangle square, we'll draw a rectangle. Um, Pretty much, if you look at the bottom, you see where it says click to set fill, shift click to set stroke. We don't want a stroke. We want the fill to be white. And then up here, it's going to give you uh, some various options for the box, but these are not the options we want to change. What we need to do is hit the uh, select and transform option here. And this changes, you can see the, uh, it changes like this. And then this becomes the X coordinate and Y coordinate on the paper starting at the top left. So zero, zero is here. So let's go ahead and move it there. We want to move it to zero and zero. So it's at the top. And then we know the paper is, uh, well, first, we're, okay. This right here, um, if it's turned on, if this number changes, this number changes in a proportional fashion. If you change this number, this number will change in a proportional fashion. That's how you prevent uh, incorrect aspect ratio stretching as you have this turned on. If you turn this off, which is what we need to do right now, then it doesn't. Then it only uh, impacts which one we type into. So we know that the paper is 576 exactly, and the height is exactly 864. So now we have a sheet of uh, a white box, which is the exact size of the paper. Now I'm going to press the uh, end button while I got it highlighted and that sends it to the background and lets everything else be on the front. So now, let me take that right, 576, 864, yes, so that's all right. Anyways, that's the correct size. So now we have the um, complete image. Now, when you're, um, so the Inkscape format cannot be directly used in most programs and for typesetting and things, you'll need to change the formatting. Um, so what we'll need to do is for eBooks and for print, generally they generally prefer JPEG, um, but we have to do this as a two-step process because uh, Inkscape only exports as PNG, so we'll export the PNG first. We want to do the entire page, so we hit the page button right here. That's very, very important. You double check that's actually doing the page. Then right here we have the DPI. Um, generally, 300 DPI is good, um, though it takes up more space. Um, it's up here, duh. Export. It's not Now I can close that and I can close this. Now it's going to ask me to save the SVG because I exported it. I'm going to go ahead and save that too. That way it keeps track of the file name I used. So here's the original. And if I go to here, uh, here. Alright, so this is the SVG we created. This is the Inkscape file. And this PNG is what we exported out of Inkscape. And as you can see, We now have an image of the comic with the lettering put in place. Now the only catch is because of the amount of text we're trying to fit into the speech bubbles, um, we're using a slightly smaller than desired font and it's a little bit um, light on the type that's the only way to really make it fit for this particular translation. 
um, and dialogue selection. So that pretty much covers how to um, take the images from an existing comic and adjust it and clean it up a little bit and then reload it using GIMP and Inkscape. Um, when it comes to actually doing the typesetting, um, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if you're going through, whether it's ebook or paper, you have to have a cover image, um, which is appropriate to the content. So it's usually recommended to do most or all of a complete comic, depending upon the, how complex the content is. That's why you can use the original artwork and adjust it with Cherokee writing from the original cover. Um, as far as software goes, um, there are different options. If you're only wanting to say go to Kindle, um, there's actually a special Kindle editor which allows you to lay out fixed formats like comic books. You can actually have it set up if you don't mind doing all the extra work having it where you can zoom into the individual boxes and things like that in the Kindle. Um, but it takes a bit of extra effort. When it comes to print format, uh, one program that you can look at using is Scribus, S-C-R-I-B-U-S. Um, it's a page layout program designed for laying things out on paper. Um, it's, it's really good. It's supposed to be professional grade and it's available at no charge for uh, multiple platforms as well. Um, another option, depending upon your needs, is um, LibreOffice, which can actually you can actually use to create uh, EPUBs with, um, though I've never done that for comics to see what those, how good or bad the results are. For like Smashwords, you know, Smashwords has an automatic conversion process where they'll convert uh, Microsoft Office Docs to uh, EPUB for you and then you can download it and take a look at it. Um, they also can handle uh, the LibreOffice which is a free product as well. Um, there are various options in to and including um, typesetting languages like LaTeX which is what I generally use in combination with a program called Lix but that's generally for the more computer savvy individual Whereas a program like Scribus um, and LibreOffice and things like that are more oriented to uh, less technically savvy when it comes to actually needing to um, do specific types of layout that are actually needed in LaTeX, which is what I use for um, my general books, which has lots of text in them because I find the um, results better than trying to do it manually because it has a lot of automatic stuff you can use but it's not really appropriate for comics per se um, well I hope this helps and uh, don't let that go huh